Yo, 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 what is going on, my beautiful brothers and sisters, fellow radiators of love? My name is Jamal Pope, a.k.a. J. Phoenix, and this is going to be your daily tarot and astrology reading for 9-11, 2024. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful week. It is hump day, and a very interesting hump day, of course, being that is 9-11, of course, which is a rough day in American history and stuff. I was really young when it happened, but I still remember those moments. I still remember those days. The thing that I remember the most was how quiet and eerie everything was like the few days afterwards. There was like no planes in the sky and it just felt weird. I think we were also pretty sure that was like on a Tuesday. So we got off the rest of the week and it was just weird. It was just very weird. So in any event, let's go ahead and hop into today's video see what we have going on card wise and what the astrology is saying so we can see how you can be better prepared to navigate these wild and insane potent times and of course uh you know all the families that lost loved ones and stuff like that and i feel like every other year every every year you hear a story about someone who was supposed to be there but somehow wasn't there like whether they had a kid that was being born or they something else got mixed up where they had to go to another place and they didn't up at the World Trade Centers. It's interesting how life turns out, but, you know, most certainly a day where we remember, you know, the lives that were lost on that day, regardless of the conspiracies and stuff like that surrounding the event and stuff. It is tragic to see things like that happen. So it always makes for a sensitive day. Let's see what the astrology has to say, though. But before we get into that, I did just do... The Cosmic Convergence for this week, Act 2, A Split Decision. Be sure to check that out here on my YouTube channel. You can just click the Live tab. And you'll see that. Be sure to watch that replay back. It was definitely a good one. It was very precise and to the point. I will say that. And of course, I do talk about the full moon, lunar eclipse, and Pisces. that will be happening next Tuesday. Let's go ahead and hop into today's reading. I have the Four of Wands upright. The Four of Wands upright. This does speak to our commitments. It does speak to, you know, it's of course called the card of marriage and all that good jazz. But I call this the card of commitment as well, the Four of Wands. So there could be this thing coming up where it's like your commitments are going to be, it could be challenged, but it's just really going to be about, you know, what are you committed to? What are you giving your energy to? And that could be another thing. What and who are you giving your energy to? And is that yielding the positive results that you're looking for? Is it yielding negative results? Are you just looking for a yes person? Are you just looking for someone to say yes? Are you actually looking to find solutions? I think that's the other part with the Four of Wands. It's about who we give our energy to. But are you actually looking for solutions or are you just venting to somebody, right? I also have the Chariot card. I really like this card too for this day. It does bring some positive energy about, you know, you know, victory, getting up on our horse, you know, going out into the world, being confident, having the bravery to put ourselves out there. I do really enjoy this card, even though it is, of course, a card of cancer uh, and Mars is in cancer right now. I think it's about, you know, having the courage and bravery to take action, even if we don't necessarily feel the best. We may not necessarily be feeling fully up to par. It's like when Michael Jordan had the flu and he scored 40 plus points. Yeah, he definitely did not want to be playing he probably did want to be playing but his body was saying otherwise but because of his commitments because of his commitments you know this is about you know what what is worth fighting for i think that's really what it comes down to what is worth fighting for because even the things that you enjoy doing you're not going to be happy doing that thing a hundred percent of the time right just like like I said, you could take any athlete that loves playing that sport. And there's going to be moments where it's going to suck. You know, it's going to be moments where it sucks. Like, there are days where I don't necessarily want to make a video. I love this. I enjoy doing it. But there are days where I don't want to make a video. I have to find that courage and bravery to still take action even when I'm not feeling the most comfortable. Because it's not always about always feeling, you know, it's like, it's like well, I'll do it when I feel like it. It's like... Yes and no, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yes, honor your feelings, but at the same time, sometimes you got to do things even if you don't feel like doing it. That's just the cold, hard truth of it. 
We do have a third. We do have a first quarter square of the moon in Sagittarius to the sun. It is also going to be opposing Jupiter on this day. So we are reacting and responding in more Sagittarian like ways, looking at the big picture, having a vision, happy go lucky, but maybe potentially turning a blind eye to things that we need to face the facts face the reality, and that's what the sun in Virgo is all about. Of course, the Jupiter and Gemini also in square to this energy in the sun. Of course, that aspect will come more into its fruition later. Not quite on this day, but later it will. We'll see that actually happen. But this is going to be, you know, it's one of those moments here. Whew. Well, you know, like I said, I always call, I say Jupiter and Gemini as like Garfield kind of trying to fit into like a small little box, you know, and trying to make that work. So I think that today can be a day where we may try and make ideals work and maybe try to fit things in the boxes that they may not fit. Maybe the facts are there. The good thing about this energy is that the sun here in Virgo can allow us to help to organize our imagination, you know, because the moon is Sag, Jupiter and Gemini definitely can be concerned about imagination. And of course, the sun is coming off of this opposition to Saturn, building up to the opposition with Neptune. But yeah, this is about, you know, how can we take those creative ideas, those creative thoughts, and how can we organize them so they can actually have room to grow? It's like you can't just throw seeds on the ground and expect them to grow. Right, Virgo is mutable Earth, so yeah, this is definitely this definitely can you know you can use a lot of the analogies with like gardening and planting and stuff. You can't just throw seeds on the ground expecting it to grow just because it's like oh I I believe it'll be so. No, you actually have to plant them, you have to water them, you have to give them space because even if they do grow, maybe they're too close together and then they're competing for space. So there's an element of that. So this is about taking those larger visions, our imagination, those things that we want to bring into fruition and actually uh, come into being. We have to be able to, you know, create that space for it and actually, you know, set some parameters, set some guidelines, if you will, organize it. You know, we can't just throw it on the ground, expect it to grow. You know what I mean? And so, and you can apply that analogy to your relationships, your work, your job, your career, freaking your spiritual development. You can't just, ca you can't just throw on the ground and expect it to grow. Like in a relationship, you can't just expect that the communication with your partner is going to be 100% all the time. No, it takes work. It takes effort. There are some days where it's easier for you to get triggered or your partner to get triggered. There are some days where it's like you have to kind of explain you know, you're, you have to explain why you're feeling something. You can't just expect your partner to know how you're feeling, right? Or with work. You you can't just expect to get paid more without doing the work, you know? You may believe that you're worth it, Moon and Sag. You may believe that you're worth it, but what are you actually doing to show that, you know? So that's how this whole energy will play out. And that it'll frustrate a lot of people because they're going to believe you know, that something needs to be a certain way, but the fact of the matter is, and the reality is with the sun in Gemini, or the sun in Virgo, is that that's not quite the case. It can be the case, potentially, but it's not quite the case. So people can get caught up in delusions, people can get caught up in their ideals, that people can get caught up in their imaginations and not be able, and not find a way to actually ground that in reality and actually let it come into being. It'll just forever exist in the ethers and forever exist in the mind and stuff. But the opportunity here is to actually bring those together so it actually can grow, you know? And I think there's also an element of being patient here that we need to have as well, you know? So we'll see as the day goes, this moon is going to try and over to Chiron, of course. It's going to also make a square over to Neptune, which of course is definitely going to bring up some challenges where you may want to just go right back into just believing it'll happen without the hard work or putting in the effort. Or it's like it's sort of like saying, you know what? I'm just using the seed analogy. I threw the seeds out there. It's like, did you actually plant them? Did you put some dirt on top of them? Which causes pressure, of course, right? And squares do bring pressure. Did you put, did you, did you water it? No, I didn't do anything like that. I just, I'm just going to believe that it's going to work. I'm just going to believe it's going to work. 
and shit, hate to call out the spiritual community right now, but it, it's sort of like, you know, spiritual bypassing and not doing the actual work and stuff. It's like, you know, instead of actually confronting the issue, I'm just going to, you know, like freaking grab my stones or something like that. Or just, you know, you know, oh, there are bad vibes here. Let me just light some sage, whatever like that. I'm not saying anything against sage or Palo Santo. I'm just saying that, that you're going to always need to clear the room and clear the vibe if you don't actually address the core issues. And that's really what it comes down to. So this moon squaring over to Neptune, it's like, emotionally, how can we address those spiritual subconscious issues that are bubbling up more and more and more, and they're going to really erupt out once the sun opposes the Neptune next week? And that's after a full moon lunar eclipse, three days after a full moon lunar eclipse, right? So we're just, we're building up to that energy. We also will see Mercury make a sextile over to Mars on this day as well as Venus conjuncting the south node. So like I said, I think the thing here is the way to kind of make it through this is by, you know, if you have to do the uncomfortable thing, then that's what you have to do. And I feel like that has a lot to do. You know, four of wands paired with this, this is very much so Mars and Cancer. Very much so Mars and Cancer's energy. Because it's about our commitments and what we strive for and what we give our energy to in many ways. And then that chariot card as well, which is the card of cancer, right? So I think Wednesday is going to be a fairly interesting thing. I, th I think it could be a day that does bring some challenges if we're not prepared. Um, everyone's going to be reacting and responding, of course, to the, to the debate. So there's going to be that element too. And people are going to have their opinions, pick their sides and stuff like that. Um, but it is interesting that people are going to be reacting and responding to this on the day of 9-11. I think it's interesting that they did the debate right before it. I don't think that that's a coincidence either. So, Final card is the Hierophant Upright. The Hierophant Upright. Yeah, so there is a level of, you know, I guess spiritual wisdom that maybe we want to seek out today. So this is going... I almost feel like... Honestly, this whole energy, it's like the four of wands is like the card of marriage. The chariot card is like delivering uh, the bride. And I feel like the hierophant is like actually marrying the two. So it's like the hierophant is like the efficient. So it does, this actually does kind of give wedding vibes, if you will. I don't know if anyone's going to get married on 9-11, but it does kind of give those vibes. And, you know, weddings can be very positive. They can, I mean, they generally are very positive, right? I mean, sometimes you have, like, the crazy weddings where some where people make a fool of themselves or someone says, I object, and all that sort of stuff. I think this is sort of those days, one of those days where it's like, you know, there may be some, there may be some objections, okay? You may be like, you know, I want to commit to this thing. And someone's like, I object. And I'm like, well, who are you? Maybe hear them out. If they have like a good enough reason, then cool. If they don't, then keep it moving. It's your wedding. It's your celebration, you know? So maybe treat it like that. You know, it's your celebration. It's your journey and stuff like that. And if someone comes up and is like, I object. And they're just doing it from a place of pure emotion and not really thinking things through and not really, you know, you know, they're only focused on the big picture, but they don't know the details of how things are going to come together and stuff like that. But they're just so convinced and convicted, you know, and, you know, convicted in their actions and their words that I object, whatever, you know, it's about being able to discern, I guess, if you choose to listen to other people, who to listen to and give your energy and entertain and who not to, you know. So that's really the whole thing of this Wednesday. Now, for this card, I do have the card of the Divine Feminine. It's kind of interesting. I don't get this card very often. The, the frequency of the Divine Feminine supports our receptive, nurturing, and soft side, allowing it to express itself openly and allowing us to connect to our intrinsic understanding of our connection to all of creation. Yeah, this is about opening up and receiving and uh, being receptive. So, you know, if the energy, I think, is like too, too, too forward as well, it's probably not going to go too well. So if you're even trying to convince somebody of something, um, 
try not to be too forward about it. You know, maybe just try to understand. Maybe try to be more receptive to it. Maybe try and figure out why exactly that person may feel that way or why they feel like they need to move in that direction. You know, and if someone is not really receptive in, in turn, if someone's not really receptive to what you're wanting to do or what something that you say, um, don't re don't really don't react and respond in a volatile way. Don't try and push it onto them either. Just do what you do and be like, oh, we can agree to disagree. I think that's going to be kind of the key to a day like today is to agree to disagree. Because I think everyone's going to have their opinions, whether it's about the fucking debate tonight, whether it's about fucking 9-11, whatever the fuck it may be. People are going to have their opinions. I think it's a good day to not try to get into arguments and try to convince other people. But, you know, if you want to maintain your spiritual integrity to just... Cruise through it, be open and receptive to the messages that come through. Maybe something comes through that changes your mind a little bit or not. But also don't try and force it on people because trying to force it on people with this very sensitive moon in Sagittarius is not going to yield positive results. <laughs> and there was a car horn that just went off right now, so I know that I'm onto something. Anyways, but y'all take care. That's going to do it for your daily tarot and astrology reading. I trust that this message will assist you on your journey today. Like I said, be sure to check out Act 2, A Split Decision, the weekly astrology horoscope. It was definitely a good one. You're not going to want to miss it. But y'all take care. Stay blessed. Have a wonderful Wednesday. I will see you all on the next daily tarot and astrology reading. Peace. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs>